Sailfish OS, an alternative operating system, has been released for the Xperia 10 Mark II and I want to show you step by step how you can install it. So let's get started. First things first, what you have to do with the Xperia 10 Mark II device is boot it up with Android. And if yours comes with Android 10, for example, if it upgrades or offers you an upgrade to Android 11, do it. So it's better to have the Xperia 10 device upgraded to Android 11 and then run through all the uh, different options. Uh, turn on your Wi-Fi, try connecting with your Wi-Fi, turn on mobile networking, turn on Bluetooth, run through Bluetooth setup, uh, pairing uh, headphones, for example, uh, NFC, if you have some NFC text, try to scan them in as well, or uh, some other things. Try all the quick toggles here, try everything on the device, make sure it is working fine. And if you get the update to Android 11, that would be even better because SafeShares runs better with the drivers from Android 11. So what you have to go is go to your uh, about and about you can see also the version number. In this case, I have XQAU52. Very important as well because you have to download the corresponding image SafeShares image for your device. So if you have the dual SIM version like I have here, download the XQAU52. Otherwise, if you have a single SIM version, download the XQAU51 version for your device. If you don't have the Android 11 update yet, go to your system under settings and go to software update and make sure that you can download the Android 11 system update just like I have here and click on update and install it because SafeShares runs better with the drivers from Android 11. So make sure to have this version, this operating system on the Xperia 10 Mark II updated to Android 11 before you attempt any unlocking and installing of SafeShares OS. Step number three on your computer, depending on your operating system, is installing the fast boot drivers. So I'm here on Linux and I have a Debian slash Ubuntu based distribution. So what I have to do is just install these. So I just put it in here, type in my super secret password and install those fast boot tools. On, depending on your Linux distribution, it might be different. On Fedora it is DNF install Android tools and I can imagine on OpenSUSE it is uh, Yast install Android tools uh, or Zipper install Android tools. If you are using Windows or macOS, you have of course also a guide for Windows and macOS. So just replace the Windows here in the URL bar, uh, the Linux in the URL bar with Windows, for example, and you get the instructions uh, for Windows. And you have to go then through the different uh, options in here. Uh, like here you can see, install the fastboot driver onto your computer. It's a little bit more complicated. I'm using Linux. This is why I'm sticking to the Linux guide, but the same goes uh, almost for the Windows or Mac OS guide. So step number four is get Safefish X. So you can download it from here. If you open up this link, you will get to this page and you can see I have many, many different uh, downloads here available because I bought Safefish X for different devices. And one of those devices here is the Xperia 10 Mark II single SIM or dual SIM. Like I said, you have to take a look at your about settings to see if it's XQAU51, which is the single SIM version, or XQAU52, which is the dual SIM version, and then download the appropriate image for your version. Then the next step is not reading this. The next step is this here. Get the software binaries for your device. As you can see here, you have to download the Sony software binaries for AOSB. And these are for Android 10 in this case. It doesn't matter if you upgrade it to Android 11 on your device, you have to download the software binaries for Android 10 here. These work the best and extract the content to the zip file folder. So uh, let me open up the uh, Safish OS image that I downloaded and I extract it to my downloads folder. And there will be a new Safish OS uh, YOLA 4.1 023 xq au 52 folder and in this folder i have to extract the uh, software binaries that i can download here from sony as you can see i click download now i have to agree to the license agreement click accept download starting now 
and after this I have to extract this zip file into the same uh, folder here I can open it up and there you can see the CFHS folder and I have to extract the same binaries in here so that the flash script can grab them while this is downloading and I showed you already what you have to do just extract it to the same folder here what we want to do is uh, go to step six and therefore I have to show you my phone because we have to enable developer mode and OEM unlocking on the phone itself so let's do this now step number six is writing down the email number and enabling developer options and you have to do this on your phone on your Xperia 10 Mark II uh, yourself so you have to go into settings and we will go into about phone okay so we are going into about phone here and what we have to do is we go into our emails and you can see the email number here for slot one and slot two in my case probably in your case you only have slot one well you have to write down the slot one definitely because this is the one code that you need to enter for unlocking the bootloader after you've done this you click on the android version and then you click on the build number a few times in my case it should be already activated and what I can do now I can go into system and here I have developer options and what I have to do in developer options is I can even search here for OEM unlock And there we have OEM unlocking and we have to enable this then we have to re-enter our pin so I'm entering my super secret pin here and do you really want to enable this because the device protection features will not work on this device while this setting is turned on I want to enable this and this is step six another thing that we have to do is we can search for usb debugging and we enable usb debugging as well and this allows us now to connect our phone to our pc and then start with the unlocking the bootloader process Step number seven, unlocking the bootloader. 7.1, take your computer. I have my computer here. By the way, a different computer than I used before because this one has USB 2.0 and for some reason, the flashing process doesn't work with USB 3.0. So if you have uh, flashing issues, make sure to have a laptop with USB 2.0. You need to unlock the, you need to unlock code from Sony. So go to the Sony web page this is what I did here already by the way it gives you very much very good information about voiding the warranty and what unlocking the bootloader has uh, risks and what it really does in the end unlocking the device itself I already chose the Xperia 10 Mark II here and if you want to flash it to another device that is working like the Xperia 10 Plus device of course choose the Xperia, Xperia 10 Plus device I choose the Xperia 10 Mark II here I get the same information that we did already preparing uh, the OEM unlocking and what we can do also is in the dialer just enter this code which will then give us a service menu and in the service menu we can go to configuration routing status and we can then check if our bootloader unlock allowed is set to yes because this is very important otherwise you cannot unlock your bootloader after this what we have to do now is enter our email number I showed you already how to get to your email number and after entering the email number you click on the submit button to get a unlock code and we will continue with the unlock code in a second after we entered our email code we will get an unlock code so I mark this unlock code and I will copy it already and what we have to do now let's go back to the instructions is turn off our phone so the Xperia 
So the Xperia 10 Mark II, just hold longer on the power button and press power off and it will then turn the device off. What we have to do now is press and hold the volume up button and connect the other end of the USB cable to your phone and wait for the LED to light up blue. So what I will do now is put this white cable in here, USB, then this USB type C I will plug in here but press and hold the volume up button while plugging in and what will happen now is that hopefully the device will turn on let's unplug it here and plug it in again For some reason it's not working. Doesn't like this USB cable maybe. So this can happen. In this case this USB cable that I have is not working. So I have to get another USB cable. Best would be of course to get one that is originally from Sony. So like this one here that should be originally Sony. So let's try it with this one. Plug it in here. Then plug it in here. Press and hold the up button while plugging it in. And now it is working. You can see the LED is blue. This is how it should be. And now I have the option to uh, flash the device. So what I have to do now is open up a terminal and CD to our SafeJS folder. So let's go to our safe address folder. I can open up a terminal here within the folder and I can make it also a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm doing. So enter the following code into the terminal. So sudo fastboot om unlock and then this. Let's do it another time. And now I have to enter the code. I have it still copied. And yeah, this is what I want to do. Hit enter, type in my super secret password. And it says failed remote unknown command. So sudo fastboot devices. Let's see. We have one fastboot device. Try it again. Waiting for any device. And for some reason, my Sony device is restarting. And it's now in green mode, which is not what I want. So unplug it, hold the upper button again, put in the cable, wait for it to get into the blue mode. Let go. And now it should work. Okay, finished total time and we have unlocked the bootloader as you can see here right now. So it's the same that we get here. Uh, okay, finished total time. What we have to do now is disconnect the USB cable from your phone, then turn the phone on and let it boot up to the eye. No need to get the start phases. This will complete the unlocking process. So you unlock. Uh, we unlock the bootloader, we disable the and turn on the device and we will see then that it is unlocked now as you can see here. This little wrench is open so that means that the bootloader is unlocked and this is what we want to do. The next step is also pretty important and interesting. It's flashing of Selfish X. It's the one of the final steps that you can do. As you can see here, it is still telling me that the device has been unlocked. Let's see if it can boot up to Android. So the device uh, booted up. As you can see here, 
and uh, it is in the first installation wizard here and what I do now is just hold a button and power it off because we don't need this anymore and now it's turned off completely what we have to do is do the same trick that we did before with our USB cable press and hold the upper button put the USB cable in wait for the LED to be blue and then we go into our bash in our terminal and then enter the Zulu bash flash sh and uh, it failed no valid device found let's try it again and it failed again for some reason searching devices to flash found failed serial number basement failed bootloader failed no valid devices found that's interesting maybe it doesn't support this device what we'll do now is unplug here I will unplug the cable from here even if the first uh, worked what I will do is plug this on the other end into the other USB setup that I have here USB um, A plug and we will try it with this one to see press the upper button put in the USB type C wait for it to turn blue and now try again the flash script and it's doing something again and as you can see here it is get var secure failed again it's trying to flash the hybris uh, boot but error to identity current slot so it is not working for some reason and here we have the same error that we have before so in my case apparently it is not easy to flash uh, the safe image on my xperia 10 mark ii it doesn't seem to be possible and i have to ask now for instructions on how to do this so this is how in theory you can flash safe uh, on your xperia 10 mark ii as you can see here i'm following the instructions and uh, usually it's everything that you have to do in my case it's not working for my device uh, but for your device it should work and yeah this is basically the video even if it did not work successfully for me it will maybe work successfully for you that's everything for this video if you have some questions or comments on what to do what to try out you can write them down in the comment section uh, until the next time see you that would be kind of a sad ending wouldn't it be so like a famous Cologne carnivalist said, moment, moment, moment. After the 10th try, I finally managed to get SafeVisuals running on the Xperia 10 Mark II with this cable, the same cable that I used before. And I can show you the progress a little bit. I managed to screen record it quickly on another computer again after the 10th try. So maybe you have to be a bit patient to get it running. And as you can see here, it is installing some applications right now. So I'm in the first uh, phase of trying out SafeAdress on the Xperia 10 Mark II. And I will, of course, report back what I found so far. And we'll also do some speed comparison tests with the Xperia 10 Plus device that I have with the Xperia 10 Mark II. And we'll see who is faster. 64-bit SafeAdress versus 32-bit on a 64-bit kernel on the Xperia 10 Plus device. We will see. So uh, that's everything for this video now. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.